Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, some time back we uh, attempted to machine some bronze castings here for some bearings that go on our steam locomotive out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. And due to uh, a goof up on my part, uh, I machined a little bit too much off the thickness and we had to basically get these recasts. I sent the old bearings in to Clark Easterling over at Windy Hill Foundry. He took the patterns that Dave Clark had made and he had actually, he actually re-poured these for us. And I've got the new castings in and we're gonna be doing take two on uh, trying to get these, uh, these castings machined out. So I did decide uh, after doing this previously over on my vertical milling machine, my little Wells Index machine, which is a nice vertical mill, pretty, pretty rigid, it's more rigid than a typical bridge port. But still on a job like this, I just felt like that I needed a little bit more rigidity to really do the job effectively or as well, or I mean, it would work on the other mill, don't get me wrong, but I feel like I can do a better job over on my horizontal mill. So I've actually got my uh, universal head mounted on this where I can put it in a, as a vertical milling machine, convert this horizontal to vertical. With this particular universal head, it will actually rotate in two axes so I can rotate it to whatever angle back here and it'll also rotate on the front. So we're gonna be basically just rotating this down to where we are milling vertical. I can cut whatever angle I want with this thing theoretically um, but we're just gonna be doing vertical mode right now. And I think what I've got is, I've got a, let's see this big milling cutter right here that will allow me to do this, I think in one pass to get the whole, whole width of this uh, and mill these things uh, flat and parallel. So we're gonna be setting up to do that. Uh, in the previous video, we got the vertical head mounted uh, over here, the universal head mounted, plus got my parking attachment mounted on this that I've had for a while and just haven't really uh, had a chance to, to get it installed. So, but now I'm gonna be getting this set up for doing uh, vertical milling and uh, we're gonna try this thing out and see if we can do it over on the horizontal mill. Let's try it out. Take a quick look at the castings we're gonna be working with. These are made out of bronze, bearing bronze and um, these are gonna be connecting rod bearings that again go on our steam, lo steam locomotives. So there's the connecting rod that connects the front wheel to the back wheel uh, on the main wheel of the locomotive that rides on the tracks. There's a little boss on the side that this will be bored out to the same diameter as that, that boss and uh, these will be machined basically on all sides, including this inside. There's a little piece that slides up over this. There's a wedge in here that's got to be machined that you use for adjustment. There's quite a bit of machining that's going to go on on these parts, but uh, first step is I basically need to get the top and the bottom machined uh, flat and parallel to one another. And that's what we're going to be doing on this first setup. And I will say I've got two more bearings coming. It's actually a little bit different size than these. It's the same style, but it's a, for a different um, side of the connecting rod. So that, those are on their way, literally. They are in the mail to me. They, they were a separate pour uh, and they've got to have the same thing done, just different dimensions. So today we're just going to worry about decking the top and the bottom, getting these to the proper thickness. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the machine set up so that I can do the other same operation to the other ones. Like I said, the dimensions are different, but the Everything else is pretty much the same, but we're gonna go ahead and leave the machine set up so that we can do those uh, when they get here, which uh, they are on their way right now. All right, uh, let's see about getting our universal head set up and we'll go from there. So basically right now I've got this set up for coming out straight out this way. I need to turn it up so that it's going straight down. So there's four bolts around this head that we need to loosen up. And actually I need to get a socket for these. Uh, let me go get that. that these bottom ones, I don't, a wrench won't fit on it very easily. There we go. All right, we got all four of those loose now. So now this head should just rotate around like such. And I'm going to just snug it a little bit right here. 
so it doesn't roll back around. I gotta do some adjusting to it though. Up here on the very top, as well as over here on the sides, there's a mark. Actually, it's right here on the back side. And I'm about three and a half degrees off. So, bump it around a little bit here. All right, I got the angle set on both axes. Again, it rotates on this back one, and then this head will rotate on this one. So you can go in two different angles. And I'm reading off of the, the dials. I got this one set on zero degrees, so that should be straight up and down. And the one in the back actually reads over here on the side, and it's on 90 degrees. I've got everything where it needs to be snug down. It should be running vertical right now. And our next step is we want to put our uh, milling head in here. This is a 40 taper spindle on this particular one. So I've got, again, a milling head mounted on a 40 taper um, tool holder here. And I'm going to put that in place. There's a draw bar that drops in from the top that we'll use to screw down into this and hopefully hold it all in place. All right, run this down in there a little ways, make sure it's fully engaged. And then we got the uh, nut up underneath the bottom that will draw it up tight. And there we go. All right, first thing I wanna do is start working on getting my parts clamped down to the table. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put some blocks on here to kind of serve as stops that these will run up against and that way they can't slide forward or backwards. So I've just gone and this is a piece of quarter inch thick material. I've got some T slots up underneath it or T nuts up underneath it here. And I'm gonna put one on the front and one on the back here. I've got a third one in the middle, but we're actually gonna be using that one to clamp with, as you'll see here in a minute but I do want to get these, the front and the back kind of done. I want to make sure these are square or relatively close to it. So we'll go ahead and kind of get these snug down. Let's see, where's my wrench at? That one's tight. And that one's tight. So I'll put a casting on the front side of this. And I'm gonna, we're gonna put them both down together like such. Now what I need to do is put a piece in there to clamp down on. So I've just got a, uh, clamping piece, we're gonna drop it down in there and that's gonna go in the center hole and that'll clamp it down. Yep, I got that piece just bridging across both of those in there and these are up against that on both either side. I'll finish tightening it up once I, I just got it snug right now. We're gonna do the same thing on the front. We're gonna put uh, pieces on there and clamp it down in the middle. And I'm gonna take a toe clamp and we'll clamp this in here on the, in the middle. All right, clamping this one down. I need to put one on the back back here and then I think we can be done. I wanna get them, I want these clamping down flat. I don't wanna clamp them and pull one side up. So let me get a clamp back here on the back. All right, got that one tight. Go back to the center one here. Make sure it's good and tight. Okay, and go to the front one. And it's good and tight. All right, I think we're good. Uh, idea here is, is we're clamped down, but we also have 
something to keep these from sliding forward. I'm going to basically be machining in this direction so the forces will be coming to the front each time. I could theoretically mill back and forth. I'm going to probably just do it in one direction just to kind of keep things simple. And uh, I think we're ready to go. Let's uh, see if we can make a pass here and start cleaning up these sides. All right, I got my parts clamped down here. I got them raised up, not quite to where we're cutting, I don't think yet. And I got my table, eh, it's not, maybe not all the way to the back, but it's pretty far back in there. And you can see we need to bring the cutter out. Fortunately, this head will come out. Uh, what I need to do is take this bolt right here off, this nut off rather. All right, we'll uh, just swing this out of the way, put it back there where it's out of the way. And now I can extend my overarms out and this whole head will come out. There's a sh spline shaft that runs up in here that allows you to move this in and out. Now I do have it up here on the crane and because of that, I'm limited on how far I can move out. I'm All right, we're gonna, and I'm gonna, Move this out, and I don't think I'm gonna to have to take that top ball off like I was thinking I was originally. And I'm just gonna kind of center that. That's pretty much the maximum width there. That should be clearing on both sides. And I'm going to just clamp my overarm supports back down on the top. That'll prevent that those from running back in. We got our overarms locked back down. This should be locked in place, and I think we are ready to start some milling. All right, I think we are ready to try this thing out. I'm running at 276 RPMs, which according to my little calculator thing, my Bob that I got, this should be about the right speed for this diameter cutter cutting bronze. And uh, let me get over here. I'm going to, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna raise that table up until we're just kind of hitting that boss right there. All right, we're hitting it right there. Just come on off. All right, I'm gonna raise up about a hundred thou. And then we're gonna let this thing feed back across. I'm right now on two and five eighths inches per minute. I'm gonna speed that up a little bit. Now we're on three and three eighths inches per minute feed rate. And I'm gonna go to four and a half. And I'm gonna just kind of let this see how it cuts before we go any faster. I'm gonna just kind of wrap it on over till we get to this boss. All right. Sounds like I've got one tooth cutting a little bit heavier than the others. Let's we'll see what kind of finish we get on that. It's cutting it like butter though. And it's making a really nice finish from what I can tell there. So uh, we're gonna let it roll in there in a couple of places. That's going to make a pretty heavy cut right there, but we're going to let it ease on across the there. All right, we're going to Wrap it back across this, go back to the other side, make another pass. I think I'm just gonna do another hundred thousandths. And I think we should be cutting all the way across here. Oh yeah. So it looks like I'm just, my cutter's not quite wide enough to clean up to both edges, but we're going to be machining those outside edges off anyway. Um, you know, we may end up just having to make two passes because I do need to be that flat across there. 
we'll work it out. I'm gonna go ahead and let this just go all the way across. It is cleaning up completely across and looks really good. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna purposely go a little heavy on the back back there so we clean it up. We're gonna have to make a second pass here to clean the front up, but that's okay. I got the first side finished milling here. I did actually go back and do some measuring and uh, took another hundred thousandths off the thickness. And I've still got about two hundred thousandths, a little less than two hundred thousandths, roughly the same amount we took off of this side to take off the other side. So now we need to basically take all this stuff off, flip the parts over, and uh, machine these to the correct thickness, which is uh, two and three quarter inches. Uh, I do have a little bit of a burr around these. I'm going to take a file, I think, and uh, when I pull these off, and I'll just uh, kind of deburr those edges around there. That it breaks off pretty easily, but still pretty sharp corners. So we'll clean those up, uh, get our table cleaned up. I'll get these reclamped down, and uh, we'll come in here and do the other side. That side cleaned up. Perfectly couldn't ask for a better finish. Looks like our castings are nice and solid. No inclusions or anything like that uh, Which is a good sign. So let's uh, move on I think we are ready now for round two I've got these flipped over the machine side is down We need to face this other side and we've got to take off some a little less than two hundred thousandths Which is more or less what we took off the other side was around two hundred thousandths so the thickness of the castings were a little bit different, but you know, I took basically two 100,000 passes. So we'll be taking a similar amount off of each side. Um, I have not adjusted my height here of my cutter. It should be set on where it was before. So this should theoretically just skim on here. It might hit a few little high spots, but I'm gonna dial in 100 thou and we're gonna take a pass and then we're gonna get some real good measurements and uh, we'll go take that last pass to get it to the correct thickness. So here we go with one more time. There we go. So to measure the thickness of these, I've put a little uh, depth uh, gauge on my end of my micrometer. I'm using the depth stop in the calipers rather. And uh, basically, you know, when I go down, we're reading more or less zero there. Within a couple of thousand, I'm gonna zero that out just to be on the safe side. So now when I go down with this, we're reading zero. And what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna kinda work off this hole. I go down to the table and I'm at two inch, 775 thou, about 280, and again about 285. I'm gonna call it 280, um, you know, these, I've got a tolerance of, you know, 10, 15 thousandths on the thickness. So I'm going to call it 200, uh, or excuse me, uh, 780 thousandths. We're going to 750 thousandths, which means we need to take off another 30 thou. I'm just going to dial that into my uh, depth here, and we will make another light pass all the way around this thing, and hopefully we should be two sides. So I'm just going to go ahead and... Loosen up my table, and it's 10, 20, 30 thou on the depth. Lock my table back down, and we should be ready to go here. I'm gonna move in a little bit. We'll cut this front side like we did before. All right, let's, uh, let's do it. This is a much lighter pass than before. 
but that's okay. We'll just go ahead and cut all the way down and back, and these should be to proper thickness. Bring the table toward me just a little bit and we'll come back across and clean that back side off right there where the cutter wasn't just quite wide enough to reach all the way across. And these should be the proper size. And with that, I think we are uh, done here. I'm gonna shut this machine down. We're gonna pull these off. I'm gonna check them for size and uh, we should be all good. All right, so I've checked the thickness of these and they're all within a couple of thou of one another. So I think we are good in that direct dimension. We've got our thicknesses uh, correct on these. And like I said, I've got two more castings, a little bit different dimensions, but same basic thing we got here. They are on their way to me. Before I do uh, change my setup on my machine, I want to get those machined uh, and those also parallel and flat on each side. From there, uh, we'll work on squaring up and uh, getting the outside dimensions correct. And uh, then we'll have to come in here and machine out the slots on the inside. All that has to be machined still. And then they have to be bored to the proper diameter. So still a lot of work to do on these, but step one is done. And uh, we will continue on once we get the other castings uh, uh, machine, have, get them caught up with these two, but uh, making progress. And there we go, job all done, at least uh, for today and at least for this video. Real happy with how the uh, vertical setup here went on this horizontal milling machine. This is really the first time I've used this universal head for milling like this. I did use it one time for a uh, different job uh, where we had a, uh, uh, I think it was a gear cutter in there. I can't remember exactly what we had, but it was more horizontal milling, but at a different axis there. This is the first time I've done any actual heavy milling with this uh, head. And again, I think it's gonna be a real plus out here in the shop uh, just because this machine is so much more rigid and has more power and everything than my vertical mill. When you got to do heavy milling like this, uh, this is really going to be a better option, I think, uh, for being able to get done work done much faster. Uh, I had previously, when I had done this job before, over on the vertical mill, I mean, on, yeah, on my Wells Index mill, and uh, I was able to take about 25 thou off with a with a uh, a big cutter on there and and it wasn't as wide as this one. I was having to make a couple of passes and kind of go around. It worked, but uh, basically making four times the cut. And, and honestly, I don't think this machine would have had any trouble taking a 200 thousandths cut or 200, a quarter of an inch cut, a 250 thousandths cut. Uh, it would have just cut through it like butter, particularly on this soft bronze. Whereas the uh, vertical mill would have probably been screaming a little bit if we even tried that. So we're gonna be using this mill for a lot of the, of the jobs on here. Maybe not every bit of it, but for a lot of it, we're gonna be using it and uh, real happy with how it's working. And again, happy with the universal head that uh, has worked out really good. Guys, with that, that's gonna be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted to the site. And uh, as always, a big huge thank you to both of those who subscribe to the channel as well as those who support the channel, channel financially through Patreon, PayPal, et cetera, which there are links to that down in the description if that's something you could help out with. Really uh, makes it possible for me to take the time uh, to shoot the videos and edit the videos because that does add about twice as long to every job whenever the camera's running in here with all the extra things that have to go on. So with that, guys, we're gonna sign off. We'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.